My friends, welcome to episode 69 of Profs and Dev Play Games. I am the Professor Larry, and over there is Anthony the Dev. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. You're not at home. I'm not. I'm in Oakland, so this will be a, a show that I'm going to have you take control of because you have notes and things in front of you, and I'm staring at a wall. Um, <laughs> so we'll have you lead the show. I will not make any 69 jokes for this episode, and we'll get right into... Uh, we're going to do discussion and news together because it's all about the Nintendo Switch. Um, you watched that um, presentation almost live. Almost live. 20 minutes off because of bedtime craziness with kids. You'll get to learn cool. that one. Some nights you're like, okay, it's going to be bedtime. I'm going to do this. I have this thing ready. And you're like, never mind. Of course nope, the nights are everything happening. spirals out of control tonight. Okay. <laughs> That's right. I was hoping that you could t- we could each say like three things that stood out, like things that we were excited about from that presentation, um, and then we can kind of get into maybe a couple things that we were disappointed about, and then have a general conversation after that, and then move into like the, all the news that we've kind of heard about since then. Uh, yeah, so... Well. So three things, or some things that stood out to you, things that you were excited about from that presentation? Um, what really caught your eye? Well, let's just get the big one out of the way that zelda trailer was Oof. amazing i've watched that. it like six times now and nice i can still watch it more i mostly it's for them the visuals are great but now i just love it for the music mm-hmm. the music is spectacular and if that's the music from the game overall i just want the soundtrack it is kind of a blend of studio ghibli and zelda music styles mm-hmm. so that's the big one. That excited me more than anything was the, that Zelda trailer. Yeah, that when that hit the, the the visuals. I don't know. I don't know if I've, I haven't seen that much of Breath of the Wild, I, although I thought I had. But we've all kind of seen the same thing over and over again. This was a lot of different things um, from the game world, and damn, the visuals were like that art design. It is on point. It looks so good. Oh yeah, I was um, super excited too. Seeing it all in like this is the first trailer I remember it really being in motion so much right like right, I've seen right, people right. playing it but this really just showed off just the variety of environments variety of activities you can do that honestly started showing that there's a lot of looks to be a large cast of characters right um, and the voice acting in the uh, trailer oh i agree it was actually was really good really well done um which i guess now we're getting full voice acting in the games so yeah, at least in the cutscenes, right? Um, yeah. Because there were some uh, gameplay later where they, Link was out and about in the world and met people, and there it was just text. There wasn't voice acting there. So, But, you know, at least in the cutscenes. Yeah. Um, I'm very, very excited for that one. Um, what? We got a release date? March 3rd. So six March weeks. March 3rd, yep. And then you were... Zelda. Right, I don't have the predictions in front of me, but you nailed pretty much all of them. Price, which we both agreed on price, but you said Zelda as a pack, not a pack in, but as a launch title, and you were right. It had it's... to be. I'm, I am shocked. Zelda is not a pack in. Not, not a pack in like that, like the three hundred dollar. I'm shocked. There's not a four hundred dollar bundle that has Zelda and like gold Joy Cons. I so am I. I think which it's makes me worry a bit of a that they don't have supply of the Switch. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they said two and they don't, worldwide. And they don't want to, like, they do not have the supply to make a special edition of it right now. Right. Yeah. Uh, do you think we'll see a Mario one then? More likely. Yeah. Give them some time to yeah. catch up and to build a stockpile, ideally, and they can... Basically, Mario comes out in the fall. That's probably my second most exciting thing. Super Mario that, Odyssey. That game looked rad. It looked a little weird at first. I was like... Uh, my friend and I were both like, is this Mario GTA? Like, what is this? Um, it, that thought but, went through my mind, too. Yeah. New Donk it, City. New Donk City. That's... Of course. Ooh. Yep. Um, and just, like, I love the different art styles for the different kind of worlds that he travels to. Um, God, it just looks like there's a lot to that game. And it's that game is done. It's in the can. Like, it could have been a, a launch title. It's, it's ready to go. So they're... You know, I think they're doing a smart thing by having... A smaller first-party lineup uh, initially, um, 
first of all, so some third-party games can sell, but it spreads out the anticipation or the, the hype for the system. So it's the people like, oh, you know, and first adopters can get the console and then they can build up supply for the holiday run. Because if yeah. everybody who was looking at the Switch for the, at this uh, presentation then wanted to buy the Switch, there wouldn't be enough. And even right now, they're sold out online in the U.S. for now. Oh, yeah, um, they're sold out online. GameStop sold out this morning or yesterday. Right. Like, there's none. So right. I assume and there I think... might be another chance to get pre-orders in, but I have a feeling the entire launch shipment is going to be pre-ordered out. So okay, yeah, I'm kind of wondering if they're gonna if they give them like an allotment and then the next month there will be a few more open up. Um, but you know, Reggie, his quote was that we're not gonna have a supply issue like we did for the NES Classic, which is true because the NES Classic was two hundred thousand in the U.S. and there's more than that. And I feel like the pre-orders were open for quite a while. Like I yeah. I've got one on Best Buy immediately, and then I got one on Amazon the next day. Like just I don't know, it wasn't didn't seem that hard to get them. Uh, I went to Amazon them. a couple times the next day and it was still unavailable. So oh, okay. you had to be there at maybe the right just, time. Right. Maybe I was just at the right time. I mean, I yeah. had the luxury of just being online on Reddit, kind of seeing when people were saying they were available, and I just hopped over and bought one. So I got a, I got one of each. I pre-ordered a gray one from Amazon, and I pre-ordered the neon one uh, from GameStop. No, well, not GameStop. I'll, uh, let you, I'll, I'll let you know in five weeks if I would like one of those, if you'd be willing to part with one. Yeah, definitely we'll sell one to you. You might need to let me know a little earlier than that. Um, I just want to make sure that I let go of the pre-order before it charges me. Yeah, um, no, definitely before they would ship it, I would let you know. Yeah, right. Uh, the only unfortunate thing for you is I'm, I probably won't won't give you a choice of color. I don't care. <laughs> okay. I cool. honestly okay. do not care. Like, okay, perfect. When people were talking, they're like, oh, the neon one or the gray, I, I don't care. Like, okay. I could care less if they're colored. I could care. I could care less if they are colored. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm I'm honestly leaning toward the colored one right now, um, but we'll see. I will, I, have, I have no idea yet. Um, so you were excited about Zelda. You're excited about Mario. So yeah. two games, and then two what games else? that I'm really excited about. Um, I mean, beyond that, they didn't they didn't to me show like a ton of the the console itself. So it was all yeah. It, the presentation was all about games. So yeah, um, those two have stood out for the most part. And then off screen was the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yeah, that's my third one. I think we have the same three. Mario Kart Deluxe, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, well, it's awesome for someone like you who didn't pick up the Wii U and didn't put like 150 hours into Mario Kart 8. Like, it'll be yeah. all basically brand new to you. Um, but you can explain time. something to me now. Okay, what? So why is Battle Mode bad currently? <laughs> <laughs> like what did they be... what did they do to make it bad? Because okay, <laughs> this should <laughs> so be a solved play... problem. Yeah, it should it should be right? That's why everyone was so pissed because um, you played Mario Kart Eight when you borrowed it from me, right? I did. I never played okay. battle mode. No, that's fine. So you you do a regular racetrack, right? You race in your opponents, you know, trying to get yeah. to be first at the feet. That's battle mode. You race in a circle. That's not and you're battle trying to mode. Catch people. No, no, it's not. <laughs> That was their battle mode, though. It was just on. It, they just put battle mode on a regular track, and you had to race around and then turn around and try to catch them and go, going in circles. You're basically just going in circles. You didn't hardly see anyone. There was Weird. it was a, it was terrible, and they never fixed it. And now we know why, which kind of sucks because we paid for this on the Wii U, and it should have worked there. Um, but to be perfectly honest, I put 150 hours into Mario Kart 8, and I got my money's worth. So. I am going to put another 150 hours into Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, so I, I don't mind paying again, even though it kind of sucks um, that I'm basically buying the same game again with a couple new characters, but you know, they've changed some of the fundamentals of the game. They've changed the battle mode. You can actually hold an item now. Yeah. Um, and you know some of the new characters. Um, so, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Yeah, those are the three things that really stood out to me. Um, if we want to really get into disappointments... Yeah, let's move on to that one. Oh, let, let me see if there was... Um, okay, so one other thing that really stood out to me during the presentation and a lot more as I thought about it is initially I've been thinking about the Switch as a home console that you can take away uh, on the go, but I've changed my thinking a bit and got way more excited to think about it as a, it's a handheld, a really rad handheld that I can also hook up to my TV. And just that change of thinking a little bit made me way more excited about the Switch. Oh, yeah, um, I mean, that's a... It's hard to it. 
it's definitely in this weird place where it can be either of that. Um, yeah, right. But yeah, the ability, the fact that I'm like, I could really just be playing Zelda. Honestly, even a, a simple thing of, hey, look at, uh, I was playing Zelda during the day on the TV. Uh, my kids have gone to bed. I don't really want to play out in the living room now because it would disturb them sleeping potentially. So let me just right. pop it out and uh, come into my office and sit down and play. And yep. Continue right where I was. And initially, I was a little disappointed that the screen was 720p, but a 720p screen like that, I think, is going to be just fine. Uh, uh, you know, oh it's yeah, not sh- it will. It will be sharp. It will, it's a small yeah. screen, so it's not. It's not as sharp as you know the Retina Display iPad or whatever, but no, I, it looks good enough. Yeah, um, uh, I have a 720p like a uh, Kindle Fire uh-huh. as a um, the Amazon Kindle Fire and. Uh, 720p is good enough. I can read books on that thing quite well. So right, and when you're watching video, it's fine too. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not I'm not worried about the screen at all, um, or the power of the thing. I think it suits me just fine. Two and a half. Um, okay. a- hours to five six. Yeah, said? two and a half to six, and Zelda will run for three. Um, I would be surprised maybe if it would even get that high. Maybe that's like the best case scenario. Yeah. Um, but with a power bank. It doesn't yeah. really matter. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, two and a half hours is usually... When I have things portable, like my DS, the times that I'm playing any time off power or away from the ability to power is my commute, which is an hour right. where I can right. actually play. So, really, even if I didn't pl- wasn't able to plug in at work, um, I, I could play Zelda for my entire day of commuting. Right. So... Yeah, that's for me as well. Like a, you know, usually it's a two-hour flight at the most, um, so that's all I need it for. And I don't honestly use it the whole time I'm flying. So yeah. uh, you know, I have my my 3ds. Um, that that thing lasts forever, as far as oh, I'm yeah. concerned. But but a power bank, I'm just gonna get a power bank for it if I'm, I'm worried about it. It's not gonna be a problem. Yeah, and it says it just um, uses USB power banks, right? Yeah, USB C. Yep. I wonder if you could just plug it into US. I wonder if it just plugs into USB to charge. You mean like in the wall? Yeah. I assume so. So I could just, you know, plug it into yeah. the old USB port to charge. Yeah, exactly. I assume that that's the case. We'll get more. I, I, I'm almost certain we're gonna have another. We're gonna have a Nintendo Direct before this thing launches to kind of get into like the more specy kind of stuff. And that, and that would actually be one of my disappointments for the thing. There's still but a it, lot of questions. Yep, that's right. A and lot, a lot of things. Like this is great. You're showing me games. You're showing me things that are exciting. But there's, but once all that flash was gone, now I'm actually into the kind of the nitty details of like well right. what is your online service that you're going to be offering right. you have some words on your website about thing what does that actually mean um, right and there wasn't really answers to that and there's been contradicting answers since then yep well and that's it's my biggest disappointment too because it then lets people on the internet fill in the answers or make assumptions or if your online service has a lot of really great things you just told us the one or two really shitty things yeah um and that's all we have to talk about. Like, I just felt like they, there was such a lack of important information when they spent like 20 minutes on one, two switch when they really didn't need to. And no one was asking for more waggle games. Um, hey, it's so waggle honestly, games. I, you don't have to look at the screen. Wow. So in a party yeah. when they're, when music's going loud and you can play this, um, waggle game where you the audio cue is how you play it. That's going to help people. Yeah. Cause you can't hear it. Uh, to me, that one-two switch was the biggest disappointment because I literally had no idea what was going on for like 15 minutes. Like, yep. what is I, what is this thing? W- like, what? Okay, well, no one. We want a machine that we can play Nintendo games on. This, what is this? And yeah. it, it just didn't. You know, and people. Uh, uh, hmm, go ahead. It's not even a pack-in. That, that exactly. It's not it a should be a pack-in. It's a demo. That's right. It's, it's a, a tech a, demo. It's, it's a tech demo of the Joy Cons and all the different tech in them, and which is great. It's great that you're showing off that the Joy Cons have a ton of stuff in these little tiny controllers, but um, I don't really see that one as something that people are going to buy separately. No, no. And the hands-on people are uh, at the events. People are having some fun with it, but it's a it's a tech demo. I don't need to I don't need to buy something to justify why you made Joy Cons. Like you should be telling me why you made Joy Cons. So. I'm not gonna. I'm not interested at all. And that was super, super disappointing. They spent so much time on it, and it just kind of set the tone for it. Like, oh, we're going, like, we're gonna try to 
strike gold in the Wii mind one more time when like just give us a machine that plays the games that we want to play like yeah you know and it kind of gives people fuel on the internet like there are people who definitely want Nintendo to fail because then they'll just be third party and making games for like PS4 or whatever that kind of sucks it um, does I don't still think Nintendo will do best if they can make it for their own hardware like yeah, the, yeah, game, the games themselves are just I think better because they're suiting them for the hardware that they're making um, right because I would say if you look at how did Sega do after they went only third party uh, not so good not as great actually their games right. definitely took a slide in uh, in uh, quality and right. for whatever reason like big shift to the company I'm sure there was turnover and lots of different things but still I don't think I want to see Nintendo do that. I, w- I would like them to care about their products a lot. Right, and I think some people are saying that, that, that Nintendo's not caring about their products because they're not doing a lot of franchise care with this um, announcement. But uh, some stuff I read with Reggie afterwards, and I, I, I really want to believe him, is that you know we looked at what the Wii U did, and we had huge software drafts. We don't want to have that. We have a lot of things that we're going to be announcing over time and have a steady release of first-party games. And that's really what they need. Like, yeah, They haven't announced it yet. There's going to be stuff for E3, but imagine if you felt the rest of the year with you know, a Punch-Out game or uh, a Super Mario... Or what's it called? Mario Maker. Mario yeah. Maker or a Smash port. Um, Melee HD or GameCube. Like, They're not going to blow their wad in the first... Yeah, what if... Uh, I mean, I was thinking about that. What if it was like, okay, you launch with Zelda. In the fall, you get a Mario... And there'll be a couple little things in between then. But in in general, they move to like uh, three major first party games a year and just consistently launch those, you know, like a, a holiday one, a summer one, and like a end of winter, spring one. Yeah, I was thinking it would be nice to have one a quarter, though. Um, but I see what you're saying. Like, as long as they have like a steady release. You know, and fill them with smaller games along the way, like like the snipper clips or whatever it was called that actually looked yeah. really, really fun. Um, things like that along the way. But, you know, Fire Emblem Warriors, for example, like yeah. to me, would be a big game. Which I bet um, we'll learn more about next week. On the 18th, yeah, the 18th. Fire Emblem Direct. Yeah. We're going to hear about Fire Emblem Mobile. We're going to hear about Fire Emblem Warriors. And then maybe another, like a mainline game, but maybe not. We're at least hear about those two, the Mobile and the Warriors yeah. game. But, yeah, no, I agree. I think that if they could three or four first-party major releases a year, like, that's obviously, with no third-party games, that wouldn't be enough. But if they can actually, it, because of Unity and Unreal, easy to port to Switch, we'll probably get a, you know, yeah. you're going to get older games at first, but hopefully you'll get the, the games that come out to other systems coming out on Switch at the same time. Because yeah. how much would it cost a developer? Like, the has been heroes they're putting on PS4, Xbox One, and then if it can switch, port easily to Switch, how much does that cost the developer to do that? Uh, it depends on the game, but for the most part, if it's like has been Heroes, mm-hmm. it's probably a trivial amount of money. Like, yeah. I bet they're being... I don't even know if they had to necessarily buy their, their dev kit. Um, right. Since they're announcing now, there's a good chance that they were able to like work a deal with Nintendo so they get the dev kit at a discount or free. So Right. That cost isn't there, so it's really just their time and whatever they pay themselves. Right. And if it's already on in one of those engines where they can just press a button and say, I'll put it for this system, and then yep. make any tweaks well, that they need to for platform, if, like, I don't think if Nintendo will have, like, trophies or something in there. I hope they do. I hope that when they talk about the online, they'll talk about you know, a number of things, but I hope they do have a trophy thing because honestly, like I buy a lot of games for PS4 because I want to keep adding trophies to my trophy count. And I'm just, that's stupid. I know, but I did it, it, it matters. <laughs> so, so it would be nice to have something like that on Nintendo, even if it's just yeah. like collecting stamps, some sort of stamp system like they had for the Wii U. Yeah. Um, but better. Um, yeah. So, but you know, a game like has been heroes, like I'm going to 20 bucks, um, I am going to pick it up on the Switch instead of the PS4 because the enticement of playing that, like, lounging on my, I don't know, in bed or yeah. out and about is pretty big and uh, seems like a pretty fun game. They also, uh, the Shovel Knight stuff's coming to Switch. Right. So that's already happening. Uh-oh. Yeah. So I would expect to see a lot of these third-party 
indie as long as they're not signed to Sony or Microsoft for the semi-exclusivity that you'll right. see them as quickly as possible trying to get their stuff on Switch. Just because, as a developer, it's worthwhile to have your game there at launch, if it's cheap. Yeah, because people are going to... Especially when it's just Zelda, right? Yeah. Or And 1-2 Switch, whatever. Um, people are going to pick up Bomberman. They're going to pick up Has-Been Heroes because they want other things to play on the new shiny system. Yep. Like, I will definitely pick up Bomberman and Has-Been Heroes at the beginning um, just to have something else to play on it. But I think Zelda's going to take most of my time. <laughs> yes. And it comes out, oh, like, five days, three days, four days after... Horizon. The same damn week. The same damn week as Horizon, exactly. Oof. Comes out Sunday, right? Uh, it comes out on a... Fr- I thought it was a Friday. Is Friday? A Friday? Maybe wow. I'm wrong. Maybe it's a Saturday. Uh, the 28th... No, it is a Friday. Wow. Yeah, that's Nintendo's thought, yeah. notorious for launching on Sundays. Yeah. Like, that's a, I'm surprised. So Friday, yes. Yeah, so Horizon comes yep. out Tuesday. Yep. Friday. Good job. You have uh, four days to beat Horizon. Go. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um... But yeah, if all goes well, I'll have those two switches shipped to me, and I'll either um, give sell to you or sell it to someone else, or cancel it if you don't want it, and I don't want to resell it. I don't know. Depends on how scarce the the product is. I guess. Yeah. Well, I'll let you um, know. Yeah, yeah. Let me know by the you know in a couple like before, four weeks. I'll definitely like know before it ships. So yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing I was disappointed at, and I know this is probably coming later because this wasn't the place to announce it, but virtual console information. I know it was. That was part of the one of the things where it was just lack of information. Like, yeah, I want to know what that is. I want clearly it's going to have a virtual console, but what kind of virtual console is it going to be? Everything? Can it right. be everything? Please, let's just do well, this. And the, well, and the games that we've bought uh, that we've purchased for the Wii or the Wii U. Like, can I please just bring those over? I don't want to pay for them again. Like, I don't know. But I, I'm i buying the Switch, obviously, so it doesn't yeah. really matter what I want. It's true, um, but it'd be a nice thing to consumers. Yeah. Uh, to be like, <laughs> no, no, you already own that on the Virtual Console. Um, it's cool. You can just play it on the Wii. I mean, Sony does it with cross-platform. Right. Their cross-buy stuff. So, well, and Microsoft's doing it with their backwards compatibility. Like, yeah, you, you know, just if you own it already, you own it. <clears throat> so it'd be nice to not have to pay for. Cause I want them all on that mobile thing. Yep. But I'm not going to rebuy every single one of the virtual console games that I bought on the last system. So yeah, especially the Wii ones that were twenty bucks each. You know. Yeah. Um. um other little things. Some... It was a very awkward conference. It was very Japanese. Oh, it was so Japanese. It was so weird. <laughs> God. And then Suda51 coming on stage and kind of looking a little awkward and then just making the, the interpreter look like a moron. Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah. I was watching that. I was just like, oh, man. So, I mean, this. I was talking to another uh, industry dev, and we were... He was saying... Well, it wasn't as bad as, like, the Ridge Racer thing, which you, I don't know if you were around for that ever. No, I don't think I it. It was back uh-uh. in the PS3 days, and it was, it's a notorious thing for when the dude announced Ridge Racer, and it was, you can look it up, it's bad. It's oh, really I, bad. I, I, but, but the thing is, I'm like, I give Nintendo a kind of a pass in their awkwardness, because when I watch these things, I'm like, Nintendo isn't a company trying to be, like, slick and, like, uh sexy marketing kind of thing like they're they're not glamorous no they're not and they they accept that they accept that they're making games and having fun and they'll just be weird and awkward and use puppets and bananas and (laughs) yeah i definitely see them as a toy maker making video games and not gamers making video games no um so I, i give them a slide in the awkward i'm like you at least guys at least have passion for what you're doing doing but i just i just wish they do something like sony where they have like you know sony japan and sony americas and then the sony america ones are the ones who talk to to the americas and we understand like they know what we were looking for and how we want to be approached um as opposed to having japan talk to everyone in the world um yeah it's just not at that at that point as a company 
They're still I very mean, if they much aren't now. They never will be. No, they're they've always they're just they're rooted as a Japanese company. I would say Sony, especially, is a very just uh, multi global. global multinational company. Like that's yeah, they just get that. Nintendo's like, no, we are Japanese. Um, right. There are the other regional offices, Nintendo of America, but they do not run the show at all. No, that dude. They know uh, Reggie's basically a hype man for whatever Nintendo is trying to sell, and he's yeah, doing his best, but. Oof. Like trying to sell that one two switch, like no thanks. Yeah, no. Not, no, no, no. No, not at not at all. I don't that doesn't look fun to me for a second. And I am not going into this wanting like another Wii. I don't want to waggle the things around. I want to just play good Nintendo games. I'll be down so. there. We can you can get it, we can play it, and I, instead of me like shooting the, the, the quick draw thing, I'll just throw the joy con mm. at you. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds perfect. Yeah, <laughs> we don't even need to we don't need to even need to buy it, we'll just throw the Joy Cons at each other. There you go, done. <clears throat> Well, well, now you know when to uh, plan your trip down here because anytime after the third, and especially okay. if you're gonna if you're gonna pick up mine, then you can plan for it around then, and then you can just take it. I don't have to you don't have to That's pay for true. shipping to get That'd it to you. That'd actually be very good. Yeah, uh-huh. so we can figure that out later. But um, what else? There's, what else oh, was in um, there? okay. So the mobile or the the pay for online thing that people were freaking out about, um, but okay. So I saw the internet just kind of explode because Nintendo's going to make people play to pay online, and especially the PC gamers who are like, oh, we don't pay for anything. But we pay for Sony, we pay for Xbox Live, and Sony and Microsoft make a lot of money that off that. They just made like they just said they made like $3 billion in the last year off those services, so they make a lot of money. And it, it um, allows them to have much higher quality online services. Right. Cause they Which is what put we that want money into Nintendo. Bandwidth and That's right. servers and the whole thing, which it's not cheap people it's not fr- like magically free um well, that's, yeah exactly um you have to pay for things if you want them to be better um the, the thing the two things that struck people badly one was that with your um online or your monthly fee or whatever you get to rent a virtual console game from the super nintendo or the nintendo for just the month and then it goes away that sucks considering yes. xbox live or, or uh psn you get like two to four to six new games that are new and you get to keep them um, until you stop subscribing. So that was that's tone deaf on Nintendo's part and I can't believe that's just yeah. embarrassing. No, it's tone deaf. Actually, thing. my honest thing with that would be mm. if you're signed up for this, you should just... Uh, sure, they want to, to mine their back catalog, but man, just just give all virtual console games. It's yeah, a subscription. Right. If you're subscribed to this, just, you just have access to all the virtual console games. You never own. Dude, I would, you just you hundred dollars a year. Yeah, you're just like I'd, here you I'd, go. You can play all of them. I'd pay more than I. I'd pay more than I pay for PSN or Xbox Live or double even. Yeah. Um, the other thing people are freaking out about that actually I think I understand is the voice um, over the system or whatever. Like you pay the monthly fee and you are able to talk to friends and chat with people as you're playing is actually tied to your smartphone. Um, and the thing that sucks about that is not everyone has a smartphone. But the thing that's good about that is this thing is a handheld device and a home console. So if you're out playing somewhere where you don't have a Wi-Fi signal for your Switch, you're still able to talk to people in game using your smartphone because the Switches don't have like 3G connection or anything like that. Yeah. So from to me, it kind of offers a seamless way to talk to people in game, whether you're home or away. So I yeah, I'm feeling that's that. that was the solution that they're going for there. Right. That's, that's what makes sense to me. And the problem is we're all filling that in and making conjecture when they should have just told us. Yeah, but they didn't say anything about this stuff in the presentation. Nothing. So No, we're just guessing. We don't know how much it's going to cost. We don't know. Yeah, I'm hoping that they'll no, we don't. make a... F- oh, what costs? No, we don't. We don't know what it costs. They didn't tell us. No, they did. The online? Oh, no. no I'm sorry. The console. They told us the oh, console no, the, price. No, no, no. Absolutely. That was like the first thing they told yeah. us. I was like, what? <laughs> no. No, I, no, 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 yeah, the online, they're just, didn't they just say they're just going to talk about it later? Yeah, yeah, and that's fine, because they should have a whole direct that's just about that. They should have a series of directs. Here's the online, here's the virtual console, here's the specs. Those are the three yeah. things that I need to see. But the fact that they came out with a, we're going to have a Fire Emblem direct on the 18th tells me they have a plan for having a bunch of directs before this comes out to keep building hype for this thing. Yes, although they only but, need to do this for six weeks. Well, yes, and if you're going to keep building hype for the thing, but there's nothing to buy, then that seems counter counterproductive. Yeah. So we'll see. I guess. Um, trying to think of anything else that was really interesting to me. 
Uh, mostly it was just the fact of even a lot of the games that weren't in the presentation that they just released trailers for. Right. During the presentation. You'd go to <laughs> right. YouTube and you could watch them. And, but they weren't, I would have they rather weren't part there. <laughs> I would rather have seen Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in that thing and not 1-2 Switch. Yep. Oh, I you don't, you don't want to milk a... I do not want to milk... Did you watch the stream where on the Treehouse Live where they were doing the eating contest? No, I did miss that oh, part. I watched some of the Treehouse Live. I didn't see that part of it, though. It's basically like filleting, like uh, filleting someone. It was really, <laughs> really bad, really bad. And the, guy, the people who were doing it were like, JC, the guy with the mole in his face, he's like, this is this is going to be a meme. This is terrible. Um, <laughs> it, it just looks bad. But that arms game, honestly, like the hands-on people yeah, yeah. have with that arms game, people love it. People think it's really, really fun. Well, someone was messing um, with it, and I saw a tweet by someone I knew, and they're like, oh, so you're giving me a new armored core. You're just calling it arms, and it's not <laughs> mecha. And I'm like, right. looking at the control scheme, pretty much it's, uh, it's mecha armored core controls, but much brighter and Nintendo looking. Yeah, I mean, that's one that I'm definitely intrigued about. One, two, switch can fuck off, but that one looks good. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, so overall, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm not as excited as I thought I would be, but I think Nintendo has a lot up its sleeve that we're going to find out this year and if they don't if we don't find out a bunch of stuff this year then i mean that's disappointing but i'm going to buy one anyways so yeah there you go i will always buy a nintendo console uh i think well no matter what i'll be getting in this console at some point um right because there's a bunch of stuff missing like no pokemon sure right no anything pokemon. which right. is all the rumors that there's one there so i can only imagine they're going to have some I can't believe they wouldn't say something on that if it exists right. before they right. s- start selling the thing. Right. Um, I just think it's going to be an E3 thing. I think that Pokemon's going to be the big thing at E3. I, I, could say I, that. I, I would I bet a, bet some money that's going to be their big E3 thing. That and Smash. Yeah. Because um, there was no Smash news either. No Smash, right? Yeah. No Mario Maker. No Mario Maker. And this thing, like Mario Maker, has got to be on this thing. Yeah, I assume eventually, but yeah. I don't think they want to. Um, I think all the Mario news you're going to see up until holiday is going to be Odyssey. They're yeah, not, no, they're not going to split the brand. They're just going right. to. They're going to talk about one game, one Mario game. Right. Uh, Maker probably next year. I would expect. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fine. I just I think that they're trying to give third party a little bit more space as well on the Switch. Yeah. Um, so that they can sell. But, you know, if Rockstar, for example, the news today was that they're thinking about putting something on Switch, they're going to do a remastered version of L.A. Noir, which is like a six-year-old game. Yeah. And I don't know how excited people are going to be about that kind of stuff. So give us yeah. give us newer stuff. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll see. Go yeah. see the specs, see what's possible. Right, so we'll definitely keep coming back to this as the podcast goes on and let you guys know about our impressions once we finally get our hands on this machine. Well, next um, week we'll talk about uh, Fire, Emblem, Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem, yep. I, I'm so looking forward to seeing what that mobile game is going to be like because yeah. I was playing Mario Run today for like an hour and a half. God, that thing is so fun. Like Mar- <laughs> They really nailed it with Mario Run. Um, so if they can do something similar with Fire Emblem like and do a better job of the pricing, um, I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so the last section of the, the podcast, um, let's talk about what, we're, what we've been playing this week. And okay. are, are you looking up something online right now for Fire Emblem? No, we no. I was just actually cool. taking a note so that we keep our show notes up to date. Oh, cool. Um, so I'll talk about what I've been playing, and then you can go. I uh, basically, exclusively, for the last week, I've been traveling, so I've been playing mobile games. Um, and I started with Monument Valley, and I, I beat it. I finished the 10 levels of Monument Valley, and that's just such a unique, smart puzzle game. Yeah. Um, not too difficult, um, but gets you thinking kind of outside the box in terms of rotating those puzzles to make things line up in that kind of Escher yeah, sort of Yeah, and, I, and of I would say it's a good game that teaches you. Like, if you when you started playing the game, you said, hey, you're going to, and they showed you, like, the last level of the game, mm-hmm. you would have been like, there's no way I can solve that. Yeah, no, absolutely it not. It teaches you as you play. Like, it, its learning curve is as good as, like, Portal's learning curve is. Just that well, natural progression of, like, let's teach you new mechanics as you go. So that by the time you're done, you're like, holy shit, I'm doing what? 
my mind's well, thinking I, about this in this way. Holy crap. Exactly. Like, I'm on the outside. Like, these things are twisting. We're rotating. And yeah, upside down, right side up. Like, the, the box opens and closes. There are so many mechanics that it kept introducing. It wasn't like, in you know, in level 9, it was like everything put together and kind of figuring out how to use them together. And then level 10 was like that plus one. It was like, there was still a new mechanic in level 9. And that was like opening yeah. the box and whatever. Um, but it had like the best, for me, like, uh, like whoa moment like in level two when i realized that if you twisted it a little bit where the things look like they were touching but you knew in your mind they weren't touching the character <laughs> could still walk across that plane yep like, what whoa like it was really cool um so if you haven't played monument valley like you know that's 2.99 that, that's kind of why i think people are freaking about super mario run because like that experience for 2.99 is you know welcome to <sighs> mobile games and the complete it, dilution of the market and value exactly right so, but you get that that kind of complete experience for two ninety nine, and you get an experience like Super Mario Run, which is great for nine ninety nine. People yep. are saying, "Well, why is that worth more than this one?" And you know, Nintendo doesn't want, doesn't want to dilute their brand, of course. But because Nintendo says it's worth more, that's and right. says that we're not going to cave to right. releasing games for super cheap because right. it's almost impossible for developers to actually like uh, you know survive on prices that low. Right. Unless you are things like Monument Valley that sell millions upon millions of copies, right? So well, and Nintendo just has to be happy making thirty to forty million dollars off that, and I don't know what their their development budget was. I'm but... sure they're very happy about that. They're completely okay, okay then, with that. Then they should keep doing it because it was rad. And the budget um, so... for Super Mario Run is probably a lot lower. I would say. Wait, what would you guess? It's, it's Nintendo, so I bet their team was a little bit bigger, but still, a game like that. Including everyone, million, mm-hmm. two million, maybe. I could be wow. totally oh, undercut, but I, I definitely think it's less than five, no matter what. Five, there's no right. because they're reusing assets. They don't have to create new Mario. Like, right? That's not they did, a unique Mario mar- model. But they like, did create new uh, mechanics for the game. They did, uh, but creating mechanics is is one thing. Is not the most expensive thing to do. Creating right, art takes artist. a long time. <laughs> It right. takes a lot of people to create art. So, well, and that's the game that I was playing too. Um, I'm going back now. I find, so I beat the game. Like I got through, got through every level, and now I'm going back to get all the pink coins and then the uh, purple coins and the black coins. Um, so starting back at level one, and the pink and the purple, like the the level is the same. But when you get to the black coins, have you gotten the black coins yet? I did black coins on one of the levels, and holy crap they're hard and yeah. it changes the way the level's laid out a little bit they add yeah. new things to the level so it's, it's like a new experience um, so it really is a lot of replay value with this thing first of all and it's fun the levels are short enough that if you don't get them all five in one run like you don't feel like it's such a chore to go back for another 45 seconds and do another run um, and it's honestly one of my favorite Mario games um, period it, it's just that fun to me um, you know obviously it's not like the best game of all time but it's fun like, yeah. I just find myself coming back to it over and over again. Um, and I just love, I love the, the ledge mechanics where you kind of, you kind of belly up to the edge of a block and grabs on. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I would love to see that in a regular Mario game, like another, the you know, the next 2D Mario game. I'd love yeah. to see that. Um, and the last game I played this week, and I played so much of this game, is Reigns. Um, we talked, I think, last, <laughs> yeah. last, last week, I was like, what the heck is that? So I downloaded it. Um that game is freaking rad. Like, um, I think I'm on my 41st playthrough, um, okay. my 40, my 41st King. And it keeps giving you like challenges to unlock and things to yeah, find yeah. and decisions. Basically the, the point is that uh, you played it, but the, the, there's the church people, the army, and then your treasury. And you have to keep all of them from either going, uh, max or minimum. You have to keep them in the middle somehow. And that's how you keep raining longer and longer and longer. But when one of them maxes out or crashes, then you lose the game and your guy dies horribly. Um, yeah. And it's all done by <sighs> swiping left or right. Just swiping left or right, making decisions. It is so simple and so smart. And I'm playing it on mute, so I'm missing the um, disaster piece music and all the sound <laughs> effects. Um, I usually play mobile games on yeah. mute. So I'm most missing pe- something. Most people do. Yeah. So you pay a lot of money for like the music, but who's who's listening to it? I guess only that's about my fault. Twenty percent of people. Really? That's, oh yeah. That's this, that's okay. That was all. back at PopCap. We had a lot of data on that, and 
most people don't. They listen to their own music most of the time, or they just don't have headphones in and just have the volume off. So that's basically what I was doing, even for Mario Run. Um, But I was playing it with my friend, or I was playing on the couch. My friend, our friend Greg, was watching me. He's like, "What's that?" And I was like, "It's rain." He's like, "You kind of watch me a little bit. That's kind of." That's kind of cool. Can I try it? And he played it, and he just played it and played it and played it. He's like, okay, I need, uh, I need to get this on my, my device. So he bought it on his phone, and then he went and bought it on his uh, tablet, I guess, or else he downloaded it there after he bought it on his phone. I don't know exactly what he did. But he next day he's like, man, I died of old age in that game. I played so long that I didn't die, and I died of old age, and people loved me. And he told me all these different things, that how the story ended. And it was just like this conversation we are having about this silly mobile game. Not really silly, but... Uh, I think I probably put like four or five hours into that game. <laughs> a good a good game is good no matter where it's at. Yeah, People exactly. can disparage yeah. a game like, oh, it's just a mobile thing. It doesn't really matter what platform it's on. You can still be a good game. Right. Yeah, I mean, they have something here that, like, I love to see this in, like, different kind of genres, or not, not genres, but different kinds of uh, content, basically. Like, not just Kings, but, like, a sci-fi setting or, you know, different yeah. settings. I, I, That's what I'm yes. For. Oh, my God. Everything like this, um, I think of how I'm like, how could I put this into a cyberpunk setting? Right. If you're in Man. charge of like a mega corporation, have an exploit. Steal, steal, the, steal the, the idea of that game and make something like that, man. Because, <laughs> woof, that game is addicting and really fun. <clears throat> it's on Steam, too, if people really want to play it. You can, yeah, it's a, they, they put it out on PC as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. It's, it was like two ninety nine. Yeah, I think um, Steam is still. I think it's the same price. I think it's yeah, two ninety nine as well. Like, rains. Yeah, two ninety nine. Yep. Oh man, you should like run out and get that game. That's rad. Um, which is funny because a week ago I was like, "What the hell is this thing?" <laughs> well, I'm glad I told you about it. Yeah, I'm glad that you knew something about it. Because I, I was like, "Well, I'm gonna be on the plane. Let me get something new. I want a new game. I didn't want to spend a ton of money, so that fit the bill." <clears throat> All right, man. What are you playing? So Diablo three. Oh, nice. Holy shit, so much Diablo 3. Uh, I finished the new season, or I didn't finish it, but I got my uh, full six-piece set and the new frame and the pet and the whole thing. So I got there. Nice. I uh, played a monk. Um, but I'm still continuing to play because once you get the... It's fun when they do these, when they're really well done and they give you the six-piece set that really emphasizes a play style. Mm-hmm. So it's a monk using specifically using this ability called Wave of Light, and everything revolves around you keeping up your aura and using Wave of Light. And if you can get the right additional gear to your set, which I got the one key piece shortly after hitting uh, Chapter 4 of the season in my 6, was that I can just wreck things. <laughs> like nice. I'm, in, I'm in Torment 7 now. Oh my god. Without any issue. I'm paragon level 126 on my wow yeah like but i'm just i can just wreck riffs right now and so again it will it will die out at some point but they really need seasons on the consoles they I really 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 seasons. do they need to be there because if it's on the console yeah. then the amount of time i'd be playing there and then also being like you saying telling you just get on and play <laughs> Yeah, I want, crush I want things. that so bad. I want that so bad. That when I when they did the Tristram thing and I started playing it, I was like, oh my god, this is back on my blood. Oh, oh yeah. Um, did you do Tristram? I did do Tristram. I didn't. We talked a little bit. I haven't gotten Works Like. I need to go back and do the Works Like part. But I did get all okay. the cultist pages. Uh huh. Okay. So I've done all that now. Well, what does uh, that unlock? Anything? Uh, unlocks unlocks a uh, portrait frame. Um, oh okay. That, it's a classic Diablo portrait frame. So. Okay. It's Those are just it. random drops, right? Yeah, you you find cultists around the map right now, and any map, yeah. you just find groups oh, okay. of uh, temporal cultists or something. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And if you kill them, they all the group always drops one page. So okay, I, I think like I was looking page six... four, like oh. was the rarest one for me. I had multiple copies of every other one. I was just waiting for a page how, four to drop. How many are there? Because I've gotten like six, seven. Or okay, I, maybe I'm missing just one then. Okay, I'll have to keep looking. So, played a. That's what I've been playing, like, a bunch of. Playing a little bit more Pokemon, uh, a little bit on the go. Mm hmm. 
just with the kids when they're around. Not progressing the story, we're just kind of... The kids are just excited for me to battle Pokemon, so I just <laughs> run around yeah. and find Pokemon that they haven't right. seen, and they get super excited if I haven't captured it yet, and I try to right. capture it. And so, that's been fun. And then this was another week of me doing my Star Wars game, so the early week was me prepping for that for my party to just immediately kill the NPC that I uh, wasn't crucial for the game going forward but oh, I put no. some I put some work into this NPC I'm like I want this to be a reoccurring <laughs> character and then <laughs> I think the NPC I, I, got like two two lines off and snared one of the party members and then I wasn't expecting to go on full on murder mode but they went full on murder mode Oh no! <laughs> and vaporized it with a a ship based turret. <laughs> well, I guess you but I should never that give them a. Is... I should never give them a turret, a ship based no. turret. <laughs> I was unprepared that for that. No, it's okay. It's fun. It's a hilarious story. They were laughing about it, and they're because they know I didn't expect it. And I'm like, well, here we go. And as <laughs> as the GM, I could have said that the NPC was not killed, just knocked back and stuff, but. Right. What? What's, the, what's the fun in that? Like, yeah, give, give it some stakes. Yeah. So. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, I absolutely love doing this now. Again, every couple weeks, it's it's just fun. That type. I love video games a, a ton, but doing the pen and paper stuff fills another another niche that just isn't filled by anything else in my life, really. So I want to scratch another part of your brain too. Yeah, just creativity and best definitely the system, uh, the way the Star Wars role playing works. As a GM, you can prepare somewhat, but it is you have to be willing to do a shared storytelling. Like, right. expect yeah, that have... that players have stakes too, and they're going to change the the story as well. And you're all working together to have a fun experience. Yeah, absolutely. They're they're taking part in the the way that the story moves yeah. along, so you've got to adapt to them as well. Yeah. So that's awesome. It's fun. It's great. I, I love it. Um, but that was most of my week. I actually really want to see how many hours I've total put into Diablo three. If I could find out how many I played on the console and the PC together, because I think oh, God, it's hundreds. a lot of out. No. So before uh, on PC, I know before um, the expansion came out. I had a character that had like 233 hours. Holy hell. I'm and pretty that's just sure one I, character. That was one character before the expansion. Right. Years ago. I'm like, oh god, am I up to like a thousand hours in this thing? Because I wouldn't be surprised. Well, if one character had a quarter of that, I wouldn't be surprised either. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> it's just such a, that's such a solid game. It's like, uh, the PS4 Reddit just had like the, you know, best 10 games on PS4. I don't know if you saw that voting. No, the, the Witcher one, Uncharted four got second, um, but I don't think Diablo three was on the list, or maybe maybe it was lower on the list. I don't remember, but that should be like uh, that game's so good on console, and people put so many hours into it. There's so much replayability with that thing. Oh, it's yeah, so good. and they just keep on giving. Yeah, you know that there's just going to keep on being patches and content and updates well, and change how you. You're like, I want to start a new character because they've changed this these items and these abilities, let's try this again and see how this plays now. Well, if they didn't put that Tristram thing out, then I wouldn't have... I probably wouldn't have picked back up because I was pretty deep into Final Fantasy XV. Yeah. I decided to switch over and tr- try it out because it was going to be limited time. And then I'm almost... I'm another hour and a half probably away from getting my character to level 70, um, which just happened very quickly. Yeah. No, it can happen very quickly now. Especially yeah. really, once you don't have to play the story. Just like whatever. Yeah. Oh, the adventure mode is way better than the story. The story is kind of boring. Like, yeah. just give me, just give me adventure mode. Like, that's what we want. Yeah. So they basically took in-game Diablo two and just were like, where people would just do the, the runs, the, the yeah. runs, but just made the runs more interesting. Like, that's right. People are going to run anyway, so let's just give them unique runs all the time and just different things. So yeah, it's cool for them to look at what people have done with their game that they didn't necessarily intend and then just kind of amplified that for the next game. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember my cousin used to had a bot system where he it would just run bail runs for him automatically. Yeah. Like overnight. <laughs> He'd wake up and see what items he had. Oh uh, I wish they'd bring back a Stone of Jordan for this game though. That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> There's a Stone of Jordan in there. 
There's in an item three? called yeah. There's an item that drops called Stone of Jordan. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, or something of Jordan. Yeah. They they reference it, but right, it's okay. not the greatest thing ever. Um, yeah. Well, that's well. cool, man. Well, thanks for uh, facilitating the podcast this week while I'm away from home. Yeah. Um, so much to talk about the Switch, and next week we'll talk about the Fire Emblem um, uh, Direct and see kind of what. God, the news is coming fast and furious on the Switch, so there's going to be a lot more stuff to talk sure, about. Sure, there's going to be a lot of Nintendo for the next, honestly, couple months. There's just yeah. going to be a lot of Nintendo news. So, sorry, Any everyone, if you don't want to hear about Nintendo, because we're going to be talking about Nintendo at least for a chunk of time, I bet, well, every week. Any any year that has a lot of like Nintendo news is a good year, because that's, yep. you know, the last couple of years have been pretty quiet on that front. So It's true. Yeah. Um, well, I hope you have a safe and fun rest of your trip thank you very much i'll be home tomorrow night and i'll get to play i'll get to plug in my nes classic which finally came i'm so jealous i'll let you know how that goes too oh man well you can play it when you come down although you can play those games on a lot of systems so i could i know but, but it's, it's nice so that easy it's just a little thing you just plug it in it just goes yep and i don't care about the short cord because i'm gonna plug it right into my computer i'm gonna sit at my computer desk so i don't it doesn't matter i'm surprised <sighs> your wife won't want doesn't want you to put it out on the main tv um, and she might want to play to... some of those games. I'm like, I can see her maybe wanting to try some of those. No, I think she will. But she, we've played computer games together at my computer desk before, okay. so we'll just we'll just do that. So well, there you go. All right. If you want to get a hold of Anthony on Twitter, he's at SummerSpeak, and I am at ProfPlaysGames. Uh, thanks so much for listening to us, and we will talk to you again next week. All right. Good night, everyone. All right. Night, Anthony. Night. <laughs>